Replaying Halo for me has been a surprising experience. A game I've enjoyed, but only so much in the past. But the short 8 hour campaign really holds together today and has many elements that I think were interesting then and remain so now. So let's get into talking up a storm about Halo Combat Evolved. One quick note before we get going, I was playing the remastered version but swapped between the two art styles a touch throughout. In fact halfway through-ish I made the decision to completely move back to the old style. I'll get into the reasons why in a bit, but just a heads up for all the switching in the video. A game that might seem like it needs no introduction, well I'm going to do one anyway, as I'm not sure how it's gone down in collective memory. I bet my generation has a lot of people who remember the series extremely well, and with Halo Infinite coming up I bet it's a bit more in the forefront of people's minds, and it was always hugely popular, but beyond that I'm not sure how it's fared in people's sort of collective consciousness. Halo takes place on a halo. That is to say a ring-shaped planet that remains an incredibly striking motif to this day. It always looms over you, reminds you of its existence and feels wholly unique, especially in the AAA game space. The game opens up with a pillar of autumn, a big old spaceship being chased down by what turns out to be a gaggle, a uh, grouping, covenant of aliens. Without too much exposition to tie us down, you quickly find out you're going to be crash landing and have very little in the hopes of escape. Playing as John Halo, or the Master Chief, you are tasked with getting off your ship. So much of the beginning of this game is done by inference, with little drop-ins of exposition throughout. In this updated version there are some terminals that give exposition, which I actually dislike to some degree. But other than that, there aren't any long codexes going into the details of the Covenant, why we are fighting, or even why we're on the run. But as I say, inference. Well, it tells us it's not going well. You know, with your ship crash landing. A desperate struggle ensues. Everyone is scrambling through active firefights to get to limited escape pods. The cavalry has arrived, the soldiers exclaim when they see you, before getting their faces melted with plasma weaponry. Get into the escape pod means you escape the Pillar of Autumn and leaves you alone on the Halo planet, with your crew dying on impact. Whether it's Master Chief's armour or something else that helps survive the fall, it's not clear. From here you have to muster a resistance force from the troops scattered like debris, construct the ability to retaliate and figure out what the hell this planet even is. Bungie, the original developer, which is complicated by this remake being done by 343 Studios, have a thesis statement. 30 seconds of fun repeated again and again and again. The idea being that if you can get the short moment perfect, when you slot it all together into what is essentially repeating combat, it will remain fun, engaging and worthwhile. Or at least this statement is the one that has been passed down infinitely regarding the issue. But it is useful. It basically says that if you're having a good time in the moment to moment, the game will at least be fun. So let's get into some of the reasons why this game holds up in 2021. If Doom is constant forward movement, momentum, never stopping, and COD is the hiding in cover, dipping in and out to take a few pot shots, then Halo is something a bit different. It's more of a ducking and weaving. You can look at the reasons why this might be. It's probably to do with the fact you have shields and a health bar. Any damage taken at first will come from your shields until depleted, and then it comes from your health. Shields regenerate over time, health you must find in medkit to build back up. So you have two pools that are essentially renewable, but one of them in the short term and one of them in the long term. This means you can stand chest puff, proud, facing your enemy, full of power and fight. That is until your shields are gone. Might be worth dipping into cover at this stage. You duck and weave, you dodge and move, wait then shoot. There are other reasons to be out amongst the enemies apart from just boldly shooting them as well. Ammunition is a concern here. Which is nice, it fits in with the theming, you know, being crash landed on an alien planet. You don't have easy access to the ship's armoury, so you must improvise and use the alien's guns. You start to build an affinity with the different options pretty quickly, and are actively building a loadout as you go, especially with the introduction of new enemy types. For instance, some of them have shields. The standard Terran weapons are weak against the shields, which is really cool bit of story building actually because it implies that the war has continued for a while. The Covenant have developed an easy counter against whatever you're running, but it does have one weakness, their own guns. A charged plasma pistol shot basically wipes out any shield, 
so you deplete it with that and then switch to the conventional weaponry to take down the enemy. And the actual variety between your foes is really really good. Often the fights become about managing a grouping of different types of enemies, which feeds back into the weapon scavenging. This along with the fact that the enemies you are facing are changing as well, they are in different configurations. So I was constantly changing weapons to keep up with this. A shotgun for the flood, rockets for the hunters, plasma rifles for the drones. One easy way to make a game feel repetitive is for there to be a solution. A loadout or tactic that reigns supreme. So having this variety of weakness and strength forces you as a player to be flexible, to update your approach, eliminating any staleness that could fester. So Halo makes use of its setting well as you can see. It's not a military shooter that has the same version of Guy with Gun, instead expanding into broader categories. It's also held up as one of the best console shooters, with people frequently saying to today that Destiny is one of the few games that they'll play that's a first person shooter on a controller. People broadly preferring mouse and keyboard. And this started with Halo. Even though I did play with mouse and keyboard, you can get a decent idea of why it works on a controller. The jumps are slow and floaty, letting you take aim as you go through the sky. Very few guns are about pinpoint precision. Just look at the reticles in this video. They have such a wide area to hit, meaning that you just have to broadly aim in the direction of your enemy to get your shots on point. This does lead it to feel very loose on keyboard and mouse, but that's what makes it work on controller and it doesn't not work on keyboard and mouse. Your pace of movement could be seen as plodding in the eyes of Quake or Doom, but it is a necessity and works with all of the above in mind. The gameplay is just consistent throughout, but that does lead us to talking to the backdrop, the story. I've already mentioned that concepts available are used to create new and interesting gameplay challenges, but the actual narrative itself is probably just fine to me. I know this is not the best praise. It never really gets in the way, gives interesting objectives and culminates in a high octane race to blow up the halo. You see, you find out it's actually a large weapon designed to destroy all biomass in the universe, in the hopes of eliminating the flood. The flood are this enemy type that use biomass for food and will just constantly replicate itself, creating this horde of enemies that will, that will destroy most biomass, taking it over. It's interesting really, because I find games of this type and period are, are quite unique in this regard. The story is well used for the gameplay outcome, but for me it felt like the gameplay is its primary objective. It's only probably the next generation that lore comes in as some reason to be playing these games. And I know that the rest of the series is fondly remembered, so I'd be interested to play them and see what they actually bring to the table because this game is so stripped back. But the story does provide another thing as well. It provides a sense of place and atmosphere. And speaking of atmosphere, I think it's important to talk about the version I've been playing. Most of the game I played with the updated graphics, because I couldn't find where to change them. I thought it was done in menus, but it's actually done at the touch of a button. And it's such a neat trick, being able to instantly change between old style and new style of graphics. But it ended up being self-destructive for me. Going through some of the levels, I quickly realised that the updated graphics completely lost some of the sense of place of where you were. The buildings are just too clean, the lighting is too bright, everything is just different. And this is to quite a large degree as well. What I read as being a swamp level in the old graphics is a jungle in the new. The Covenant ships became more standard sci-fi instead of being this really odd, weird, buggy, alien type of place to be in. It completely changes the entire feel of the game, it's not just an updated lick of paint, it's a complete change of place and feel. I also currently have a bit of a thing for older graphic styles. I think potentially they actually serve a really interesting place in games. They ask something of the player, they require you to use some part of your own imagination to get the full idea of a place. You need to meet them halfway. New graphics end up having to tell you every single little detail about them, they are really really literal. And I think there's a place for that, I think you know, you play a racing game and it's absolutely beautiful and crisp, but I do like this sort of halfway meeting between player and game. It gives more space for the player to insert their own thoughts and processes on a place. But when I think it comes to the remastering of this game, definitely stick to the older graphics if you can hack that sort of style. So you can see that I've had a really good time playing this game. I really like the old aesthetic, I really like the shooting and the playing, I think the story is decent enough, and the setting, you can see how Bungie gets this thing for really good skyboxes. When you first land on the Halo and you just see it looming up over you, 
that is just taken and replicated again and again and again and it just becomes their house style after a while. I wonder if it starts in their previous game to this, Marathon, but it's definitely here. I'm not sure if the point of these retrospectives is to be a bias guide. I think if you know you're going to play these games then you know you're going to play them. But for what it's worth, I think that this game is really, really good. There are still some lessons in here that can be learned today and some takeaways that you can ha have with it. You know, when you think of the combat scenarios, they're actually quite open. You can kind of approach them in different ways. One of the early missions has you have to go and rescue different groups of Marines. And I'm fairly sure you could probably just do that in any order. Don't get me wrong, it's kind of linear and you do brush into them one at a time as you go. But that openness and that ability to take on objectives in your own way and figure it out, it, it's not... It's a game that's linear, but it doesn't feel really linear. The gunplay is balanced perfectly. You know, you are having to change weapons. That is a part of the game. And that feels really fun because it forces you into situations that are new. It avoids staleness. That all being said, just play it in the old graphics mode. Seriously. <laughs> Thank you for watching. My name's been Billy. Goodbye.